shooters to sing along. So today we are talking about hippos. So whether you are familiar with hippos from your local zoo or the Jungle Cruise ride at Disneyland, whatever it is, you know these are some pretty massive animals. Um, they're famous for being big, they're famous for eating, they're famous for having a huge, massive head. So it's pretty interesting when we can turn on these x-ray glasses and look inside and see what some of these huge body parts are held up with. So right off the bat, you guys can see, if you just look right here, you can see how huge that head really is, right? Uh, this thing is just a massive block of just pure bone. And I mean, it's it compares in size to the animal's rib cage, you know, like it, it is, it's just a really big part of their body. And when we look at their muscle structure and stuff, we're gonna see what it takes to really hold up a head this thick. But already just looking into its bone structure, look how thick the, the spine in its neck has to be. Um, just without the muscles alone, just to be able to support this head. You can almost imagine that this, the head of the, the hippo, I don't know for sure, but it has to be the heaviest weighing item, or at least bone in the hippo's body here. So another thing you can see too, they have pretty square shape of a front facing snout, right? And then in that snout, they have these nice big round tusks kind of in here. Now we don't see those typically, sometimes you do um, when their mouth is closed, but what this does is it gives their mouth a really nice rounded closed shape to it. So it almost looks kind of cute when we see it in person, but when you kind of understand what's hidden under there, maybe not so cute, but we'll, we'll still get, we'll still call them cute so they don't bite us. Now again, moving down the body, everything has to support the front here essentially, right? So if you look here, this is a humongous rib cage. This is, it's a giant, giant rib cage, you know. Um, hippos are a lot of blubber and fat, but the fact that this rib cage almost goes all the way from his chest to his back, it's pretty significant. And just also considering the size and the, the typical weight that a hippo is, to think that this is the almost the length of their whole body, it's pretty impressive. So we want to be thinking about this when we're drawing them. They're not just short, stubby, fat creatures. They're actually, they're long too, along with their weight. Another thing that you'll notice too when we're drawing is that you do typically see this point that happens here because of these thoracic vertebrae coming up and pushing out at the skin. And then they go smaller as they reach towards the pelvis there. Now, lastly, um, we have the typical animal bone structure going on here where we kind of have that zigzag format. But what you're gonna notice here is that their bones on both front and back are pretty small. Like this is the size of that lower arm and this is the size of the upper arm, right? And you don't see too much of a difference back here on the back legs. And so what this gives us when we're looking at this creature is really stubby looking legs. Um, yes, the legs do typically come up to here technically, but uh, we don't see a lot of that because of the blubber layers and everything that is on the hippo. A lot of it's really covered, so we den generally will only see maybe this much down. That being said, it's good to know where these bones are generating from, so that way when you are drawing and you get confused, maybe you can refer back to what you know in your head. All right, so now we get to the meat of this hippo, literally. I mean, just look at the muscle structure here. Um, there's so much muscle going through this neck here and you can really see like all of this almost all the way to the skin layer which is right here is pure just like muscle on top even though these creatures look really fat and flabby and they do have a fair share of blubber and stuff on them but realistically they are just massive beasts here and like these these cheekbones right here and all this stuff lead to a very, very powerful jaw that just can snap through bones. So really dangerous creatures, but sometimes the photographers can capture a really cute side of them. So remove that x-ray glasses that you have on there and we see a pretty cute animal. And again, you can see where all these things are hiding like I was talk about, talking about, right? So we have this really cute round mouth but what's happening in here, the reason it's so big is because they're holding in those massive teeth and tusks in there, right? So it just helps to make sense of all this stuff. Like this neck, this is all muscle structure working together to keep this head 
off the ground. You can see too that their skin structure is pretty loose and kind of, for lack of a better word, wrinkly or flappy. So you get a lot of these folds and like kind of double chin things. And a lot of times their, their skin is kind of sagging over their limbs, for example. Um, so again, remember the leg is going all the way up here, right? It's connecting to the hip joint up here, but we only see from here down. So it's just important that we kind of recognize that in our own heads and know what's going on in this bone structure here so that we don't just kind of draw boneless noodle arms. Now, before we get to our photo references and we draw together, I always like to look at some cartooning examples and I found a few here. I think I, this is gonna be the most notable hippo that is out there. We have Gloria from Madagascar. Um, so this is one of the most notable hippo cartoon characters that I could personally think of. I know there's others out there that have had smaller roles in uh, various Disney cartoons and stuff like that, but she has an actual important role in those cartoon movies. And you can see that although they're, you know, stylizing her and making her look a little cuter, a little friendlier, we still keep the idea of what makes a hippo a hippo, right? We still have that really, really big mouth structure, pretty big head. They kind of went ahead and really exaggerated the body, but they kept the idea of weight, right? Um, her character was obviously known for being thick, but the idea here is that you know, you can't really cheat a hippo. You can't really make a hippo skinny um, and it's still gonna appear as a, as a hippo. And lastly, I was able to find a diagram here. Of, I believe this was from Fantasia at Disney here. And this is just kind of like they're figuring out poses and kind of breaking down some of the elements of their hippo. So again, you can see here what they're thinking, right? Um, of course, it's a little more animated, a little more cartoony. You know, but we're thinking about that big, big, big weight, nice and round too. Um, you're gonna see that kind of bean shape in there for the body structure a lot, right? Um, which you do see in some of the poses on the pictures that we're gonna look at as well. And then of course, they really kept and played with that big mouth structure. And what I really like that they do here is that they keep the mouth and the head almost has two separate shapes, right? So the picture quality is not that great, so I can't zoom in too far. But if you look at this picture right here, you can see that the mouth and the head are two, I mean, they're connected, but they're almost two separate shapes, right? Like going right above it, we have the mouth and then the head. And this is something that I used when I was drawing the hippos um, from the photos too, because they really do have like these two nice separate shapes and then this kind of like elongated mouth connecting piece that leads into their nice big head structures. All right guys, so this is gonna be the one kicking it off here. So we have a front facing look at this hippo and really, really wanna play that up. And again, we're thinking size, 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 right? These are really massive, big animals. So when it comes to that stomach, you don't want to underplay it essentially, right? So we're gonna start with a, kind of like an egg shape for the body here. Now the green um, diagram and the blue lines going down, if you guys can see those, those are my head length. So green is kind of representing in this one, how long the body is, and blue is representing how tall the body is. So you guys can see that with the foreshortening going on in this picture, that we really only have about two heads over to the side. I mean, it's a little larger. But, um, so we wanna remember aspects like that, but he does get a little larger and go a little more over to the right side of his face as well. Uh, but we're really just seeing his head and then that big round shape for the body. So as long as you can draw in two kind of oblongish oval shapes or circles, you're good to go for this guy. If you guys can see that point at the top, right above the green line there. That was the point that I was saying they kind of get on their back because of that thoracic vertebrae. So when we come back in detail that we can throw that in, but you guys can see I kind of created that point with my shape originally, just kind of having it in mind. Um, all right, so we have the separate mouth shape and now I'm kind of connecting it to my egg shape that I started with for the head. Remember the whole point 
of drawing in these simple simple shapes is to come back with the idea that you're going to be changing things and you're going to be making corrections. It's not supposed to be perfect at first. Um, it's all about the process. So here I'm just kind of figuring things out, throwing in indications of what do the eyes look like. Um, I noticed I couldn't really see that much of the right eye. So I kind of wanted to draw that a little more squintier, a little more out of view there on the side of the head. And then play up those nice big nostrils. And of course that really grumpy face of his. So again, it really helped me personally and also just like to follow those diagrams from the cartoons and separate that mouth shape, that like extended off the face mouth shape, separate it as its own shape and then connect it to the head shape later. And it just kind of created more of that hippo look that you get, but they have really strange bone structures and really strange faces that we haven't seen in many of the animals we've drawn so far. All right, jumping to the feet here, we really just have a couple cylinders going down. Pretty basic, they have really stumpy little legs. Um, you know, it goes a little further in the body, but again, what we can see is what we can see, and we know that their skin kind of covers over a lot of that bone structure. So remember, if you don't have the information to draw the bottom of the feet, give me a reason why, what is it hiding behind? Here I drew the environment. You guys can draw anything you want. You can draw them standing in a puddle if you like. But I went with the ground plane. All right, so this one is bringing us that bean shape that I was talking about that we saw a lot in the cartoon depictions, right? So here it is. Um, I think this is actually a toy just based on how shiny it is, but it was a really realistic depicted toy. So I thought, why not? It's a really good side view pose. I couldn't find too many side view poses when I was looking at the time that were high quality. So this was one of the best ones I found. Um, and you know, it's an accurate depiction, so we're all good to go. All right, so again, we have a side view of the face a little bit more, right? It's facing a little bit towards us, but again, really just kind of emphasizing that separation of the mouth and the head shape there. You can really play it up to quite the, the big level. I could probably have gone even bigger with that mouth shape. So don't be afraid to make it bigger and then have to scale it back later if you need to. All right, here I'm throwing in some little line indications of my head height and length, right? So this is just what keeps me in check, right? It keeps me um, under control of my proportions. It doesn't make it so I draw a humongously large hippo and it makes it so I don't draw a super teeny tiny hippo um, because again we have creatures with a big mass and size here so for me it's really important to properly represent that size in the picture so I for all of these pictures I use the head chart here you guys don't have to if you feel like you're comfortable without it um, but for me it's a really good practice of just kind of keeping my proportions in check All right, so kind of going in and adding a little bit of detail here. I always jump the gun. I always want to jump straight to facial details, but as the art teacher in me, I would say keep moving through your drawing and try to draw it all before you draw the details. So go down to the legs like I'm doing now. So remember some of those bone structures that we looked at, they're not just a tube, right? They're not just a macaroni. So there's bones in there and then they also lead to their like fingers, right? They don't really have thick, prominent fingers, long fingers, or anything like that. They're not grabbing anything. They're mainly just meant for like hoofing around. So um, they're kind of more of like a puck shape at the bottom. But then you want to go in and define um, a little more of those separations in there. All right, so when you're coming in and adding in some of those legs, remember again, they have a lot of loose skin here that sags over. Um, no better way to say that, no, I don't know, better sounding way, but um, so you want to really emphasize that. So you can see with the upper arm there, or the front face, the front arm, we have this kind of skin bulge that pours over, and then the same thing happens with the back arm a little bit, where you have this back leg kind of like peeking out of some loose skin there. 
it's just kind of part of the nature of the creature. They have a lot of loose skin on them for whatever the reason is. And so you wanna make sure you depict that in your drawing. All right, so here we have a pretty different view here. This really represents just kind of how complicated the shapes of a hippo really are. Um, when you don't really think they are, right? They just kind of seem natural. But, um, so I had to think about this differently. So you, you just want to remember, this was kind of a good example to explain that. Just because in the last two examples, I was able to use an egg shape for the head. That doesn't mean in every case, um, what I'm drawing is going to be an egg shape. I have to stop and analyze my reference, my picture. What am I drawing? What am I seeing? And I have to put the shapes down on the paper that makes sense to me. Um, specifically, right? Because I'm I'm the one drawing this at the moment. Um, so you guys, when you're drawing it, you want to see, do these shapes that I'm putting on the paper make sense to you as well, right? That being said, um, kind of just mentioning that because you can see that where I would have put the egg shape, I put a square or a bit of a rounded rectangle there um, around the cheek going to the other side of the face. And then I just have a really, really long kind of tapering rectangle or almost like trapezoid a shape for the face, right? Um, so that's you know, from the top of the head all the way down to the nose. So I just kind of had to stop and rethink my shapes for a minute and not just get, like, don't fall into a trap of every drawing I do is gonna start with this shape, right? Different positions, different poses, they all have different shapes and that's why we're kind of learning to break these things down. So you gotta kind of find what works best for you in this application. So from this view, we're looking pretty much straight on, head on, right? So you can see we don't even really see any of the other feet other than that front one there. Most of the back feet are covered. So Jonah, think about is we still have overlapping shapes in here, right? We still have a rib cage, for example, that is in front of the pelvis, right? So if we're looking at this guy with an X-ray vision or he didn't have skin and muscle on, we would see, um, we wouldn't even see the pelvis because the ribcage is probably covering it. So we wanna accent that in our drawing. So that's what I did there with that first oval shape that connects back to the cheek. And then I drew kind of like a half moon shape behind there that represented the rest of the mass of the body. Okay, so these are, this is just kind of like bringing you guys into the thought process of how I'm finding these shapes. Um, not just kind of throwing random things in there and hoping it works, right? I'm kind of looking and analyzing and breaking down. All right, so now that I got my basic shapes in here and the pose is all right, I'm going to break down into details here. And of course, these shapes that I drew are not what I plan to keep, right? So time to carve in and make the modifications I want. I can look at that nose and realize, you know what? I Maybe I want to make it bigger than it even is on the picture. I can make it a little slimmer. Um, this is kind of where you get to add in some of your artistic cr creativity here too. All right, so I carved into my face shape a little bit, adding some of the eye there. And we're gonna leave it to these details here and move on. All right, here we have a natural hippo in the wild giving us its best Instagram photo pose. So we're looking from the backside here. Um, <laughs> But this one just clearly, we are looking from the back. I wanted every angle that we could find when we're drawing these hippos, right? It's always the best if you can find every angle. Um, and again, we're thinking about these different shapes. So for this one, I didn't see that much of the head because a lot of the head is actually being blocked from the mass of the body, you know? So here I just kind of threw the head in as a rectangular shape. And then I'm gonna come back in and define that later so right now I just kind of want to break down my head sizes. So for me, you guys can see that looking just from the bottom of the nose length, we have about five heads over to the right. And that's going to be about the full length there of the hippo. And then we have two head lengths up if I'm just kind of counting the length of the rectangle. And he doesn't, he doesn't go two head lengths up. He's a, he's about one and a half, give or take. Um, but again, this is just kind of what's helping me keep my proportions, especially when, you know, this might be your first time drawing a hippo or if you just have a problem kind of keeping your proportions in line, definitely recommend giving this a try and trying to make this a habit if you can. It's really good drawing practice to keep up. 
All right, so now we gotta find this guy. And again, I'm thinking of overlap, but just like the other picture where I had the idea of the rib cage in front of the pelvis, here we're getting the complete opposite, right? Because we're looking directly at this dude's butt. So we are getting the pelvis and their pelvis is massive. Um, and it's in front of the rib cage for the most part. We're not at such an extreme angle as that last picture, but I do want to emphasize that there is mass in front of mass. It's just going to kind of help further give that feeling of perspective in my picture. This um, hippo is walking away from us. I do want to represent that. So that's the idea there. So that's why I wanted to draw that circle shape and then another circle shape coming in that connects to the head. If you guys see that diagonal line that I drew down there at the bottom of the foot. So obviously this line doesn't exist on the picture, right? But this is also to help me further keep my perspective in line. So I'm seeing that, just looking at this picture, um, that front facing to us back leg is further down on the picture than the front leg that is closest to his face, right? So what I did was I kind of just drew a diagonal angle, trying my best to copy what is going on there where I know the front leg is higher, the back leg is lower. And then that just kind of helps me as a quick guideline so I don't end up drawing a really stumpy little foot that lives on the same line as that front foot. Because we want to remember, again, they're moving in space. They can move forward and back, left to right, and everything in between. So we have to find those angles that we're looking at when we kind of approach these um, different positions here. So we're going to clean up this guy's body a little bit, and then we'll move on to our last picture. By now, you guys know I saved the cute babies for last. So here we go. We got a baby hippo, and it's super cute. Um, just kind of sitting there on the ground. Uh, just kind of an interesting fact to throw out here. I was reading when I was looking up hippos and stuff that they actually can't swim. They mainly just push themselves off of objects, and that's how they kind of get around. So kind of like when you are racing your family member in the swimming pool, and you push off the wall, right? And you try to get that jump start. So that's pretty much what they're doing to move around. Otherwise, they can kind of just walk around on the bottom of the water and their massive weight helps them with that. So, okay, let's talk about the shapes that we got going on here with this guy. Really no difference. We're just kind of miniaturizing them. And if you guys remember the last videos where I drew a baby kangaroo, I think I drew a baby animal in another one of the videos. You guys can let me know if you like. I'm blanking on that right now. But we want to keep it round, round, round. Um, the rounder and less hard edges you use, the cuter and more baby-like something is going to seem. It's just the rule of the universe there. So again, I just wanted to keep this everything nice and round so you guys can see even with that mouth shape, and, I, and I, he doesn't have such a long face here as he would when he becomes older, but I still wanted to keep that separate shape. And I drew that rectangle nice and round, no hard angled sharp curves or sharp angles, right? So coming in here and just kind of figuring out, blocking in some of that body. You can see some of these really cute, nice neck rolls and stuff, right? Because obviously, you know, he's got a lot of growing to do. These guys can grow really, really big. Um, I was reading that the males can grow up to 9,000 pounds. So just imagine that for a second. So, you know, this is a little baby, probably already pretty heavy, but he's got a lot of growing to do. Anyways, we're going to draw in their feet here. Um, again, with the feet, kind of like you'd expect, you just kind of want to keep them nice, cute, and round. And then go in there and define those little finger shapes too. Don't kind of just leave them with little stubs. Um, that's not going to help him get around, right? We got to make sure this guy can walk around. And then for that back leg, it's really cute because he just has his butt plopped down there on the ground. So it's kind of just kicked out to the side. And we're really just thinking of kind of tube shapes here that we are adding some structure onto after. Again, we also have our overlapping shapes. I know I'm the broken record here, but I'm gonna keep talking about it when I see it. 
um, the head is overlapping the neck flaps, the neck flaps are overlapping the chest, and the chest is overlapping that back part of the body. So again, you just it's good practice to just kind of remember these things and throwing them in. And finding the angle for my eye here. He has a little bit of a tilt, at least from this photo we're getting, right? So don't just draw them straight left and right from each other. Add a little more interest to your picture. One eye is higher than the other. We can come in and kind of add some of the cute details here right? so a little bit of that lip popping out throw in this really cute kind of hippo smile up in there and it goes back to that connecting cheekbone remember that's going to be a really long shape when they get older so it still exists there but not as big so we just want to indicate that and then we got a little bit of the bottom of the mouth and then Come in and add some more detail. So one of the reasons I figured out when I was drawing this, why does the ear and why did the nose, nostrils for to be precise, look different on this baby um, hippo than the adults? I thought maybe it was like a difference in their growing up process. But actually when they're babies, and I think when they're adults too, they have the ability to fully close their nose and collapse their ears. Um, so when babies specifically go in, they do this to protect themselves. So they go in and they close their nose completely all the way tight and as well as their ears. And then when they're really young, they also close their eyes. Although um, hippos actually kind of have like a natural goggle built into their eye. They have a natural like membrane that goes over their eye when they go into water, which might be something that they develop as they get older. All right, um, anyways, enough hippo facts, right? We're trying to draw this guy. So I'm just gonna clean up some of these construction lines here and figure out a little more detail on that eye that's popping off. The eye socket, guys, if you haven't noticed yet on some of these pictures, it comes off that skull shape. So usually it creates this really nice, interesting shape um, that kind of comes off as well. So you can come in and clean some of the stuff you don't actually see. Again, we draw the overlapping shapes in the beginning to help us, but then we can always come back and fix some of them later. I wanted to draw some of that wrinkly skin, make sure I kind of drew in some of those folds and really emphasize those neck folds, right? And give them a little bit of that bumpy texture that it looks like they have on the nose as well. So I'm just kind of coming in, defining some of my shapes that I already created, right? They're already there on the paper. I'm just coming in and making them a little bit sharper and kind of trying to find the changes that I can make if there are any. So darkening my lines. We always start with that light drawing. And after a few bit more details, we are going to be finished with our hippo lesson. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped in some way. Um, sometimes drawing creatures like this can be a little intimidating due to their size, but again, if you just break them down in simple shapes like we've done with all the animals of the past, you're going to be good to go. But if you do need one more tip, I think I know someone who has a tip about what's really important when you're drawing hippos.